Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. My name is Chef Emily. Today, I'm going to be teaching you about simple spring soups. And welcome back to many of you. Thank you for joining me time and time again. It's always a pleasure to see our familiar community joining us and sharing these classes with your friends and family. So thank you so much for doing that as well. So today is an idyllic spring day. It is absolutely beautiful out. The sun is shining. There's a little cool breeze. And uh, this is a transitional season. So we're going from the colds of winter into the heat of summer. Um, and you can get these chilly nights once in a while. And I just wanted to support your, your bodies with spring produce, but in a way that's also grounding and nourishing. So I feel like um, often when spring arrives, there's this energy, right, of life and emerging and everything is popping up green and it's very exciting. And with this kind of like um, this energy, you know, it, it's hard, sometimes hard to settle down in the evenings. And so sometimes soups can help with that because they're warm and they're nourishing and they're grounding and they're delicious. So we're going to be featuring tons of spring produce in soup form. So this is, this is the goal of this class is to kind of provide you with recipes that are delicious, that feature um, our seasonal friends. And, um, and that's going to be our class today. A few Zoom ground rules before I jump into our cooking. If you would kindly keep yourself muted throughout the presentation, always very helpful to me. So, um, so that there's not feedback noise and people don't get confused. Um, and then if you do have a question, of course, we love questions. So please ask your questions. Um, this community always has wonderful, um, insightful questions. And, um, and yeah, so I always appreciate, you know, sparking a conversation around things. Um, if you want to put your questions in the chat box, you should feel free to do that. Uh, and then that will be our Zoom ground rules. So with that, we're going to begin. This is our packet. If you didn't get our packet, I'll also send it out after class to everybody that attended. Sometimes folks sign up a little late and it's a last minute, um, you know, a last minute class for you, then don't worry, you're gonna be getting this packet as well. So I'm gonna be focusing on three soups today. The first is a creamy mushroom soup. So I love mushrooms, um, but I don't often make mushroom soup because it doesn't always look uh, super fabulous. It just kind of looks like a brown mush, but it is so delicious and mushrooms are so, so good for you that I just, I couldn't resist. And this time of year, you can start to find some really unique and fun mushrooms um, at your farmer's market, things like morels, maybe even chanterelles if you're feeling a little fancy. Um, but if you're not and you just got, you know, your local grocery store, never fear because shiitakes and baby bellas are here. So you can find these pretty much at every grocery store, shiitake mushrooms being the one that is it's a little bit, um, you know, uh, more compressed than the baby bellas, which are a little juicier. So I like to use a mix of mushrooms. I just find that this gives this soup a little more flavor. Um, and we're going to add other things in here too. Um, often mushroom soups are loaded with cream. So we're not going to do that here. We're going to make it a little bit healthier by using cannellini beans. Now these are um, your white beans that are drained from the can, rinsed, drained. And, um, and I'm going to blend this up in our blender with um, some vegetable broth and a little bit of flour. Now, if you are gluten-free, you can make a substitution here. You can use oat flour instead of, um, instead of spelt or wheat flour. I think that's what I had written in the recipe. So yeah, I think I wrote spelt or wheat. Yes, I did. So spelt or wheat flour is, is great. And then if, um, if you're gluten-free, use the oat flour instead. So we're gonna add about three cups of our broth. And this blender has a measurement on the side, so that's really helpful. And about a cup of our beans. So usually in one can, there's a little more than a cup, so I'm just going to go a little shy. And then we're going to add that flour in, and this is going to get blended together to make the creaminess of our base. So we're just going to get that going. And then I'm going to heat my pan up. 
and start sauteing my vegetables. So unlike um, regular mushroom soup, I'm going to be using leeks and onions and garlic to really get this So now you can see this broth has kind of become this kind of creamier, thicker, um, thicker texture. And we're going to start by sauteing our onions. So we've got onions, leeks, and garlic. Um, and then just a few notes on mushrooms. I realize I'm blocking the cutting board here. <laughs> uh, a few notes on mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms in particular, very low calorie and high in our B vitamins. So wonderful, wonderful source of B vitamins, um, especially B5, B6, and B9. Not B12 though. B12 is usually found in meat sources. It's a little harder to obtain from, I think it's almost impossible to obtain from plants. So the B12 is, is best found in meat um, or fish or things like that. But our other B vitamins loaded in our mushrooms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know what, I'll just slice this straight across since everything's gonna get blended. It doesn't really have to be a particular shape or size. You just want it to be a little bit broken down so it can start to saute in the pan and break apart. So nice thin slices with your onion. You can buy your onion pre-chopped and just make sure you're tucking your fingers as you're slicing. So you don't want any thumbs or anything in our, in our mushroom soup today. So I'm adding some oil to the bottom here and I'm gonna start with the onion. Just get a little saute on that. Any questions before I talk about our leeks? No questions yet, Chef Emily. Okay, wonderful. So getting going with our leeks, I chopped these up already, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to work with leeks in our next soup. So this is what they look like. They are amazing. Um, I particularly like working with leeks because they're sweet. They have this creamy texture that onions just don't have. Um, and they're very nutrient dense as well. Vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamin K. Um, and because they grow, Leaves are usually very, very dirty. They grow sort of in muddy environments and they usually have tons of dirt in them, um, but they're very mineral rich as a result. So we've got our leeks in here and I'm gonna show you how to clean and work with leeks because they're so tasty and I feel like people don't use them because they're always too dirty. So I wanna show you how to use them. We're gonna just get some, get this kind of work, work down a little bit. So it's nice and soft. I have my heat pretty high. I'd say it's kind of like a medium high heat. I don't wanna burn the onions, but I do really wanna get that heat working in there. And just adding these ingredients to the pan one at a time. Well, next, um, after this, we're gonna add our thyme. So I have some fresh thyme here. And this time of year, maybe you can even start to find these things in your own garden. So when I'm working with these herbs, I hold them about two thirds to the top. So if this is the bottom, I hold them about two thirds up and leave a third at the top. Because you can see this is where it starts to bend. And this is where it's going to break. So, but if you hold it right below that spot and you pull against the grain, you're going to get those little leaves off. And then for the ones at the top, you can just kind of pick them off, um, you know, more gently one by one. So again, there's a soft spot on that herb. Hold right below that soft spot, and then you can pull down to strip the herb. And then you can just kind of work your way up at the top. Right? So many times we have a nice long piece of time, and you go to pull it and pull the leaves off, and it breaks, right? You have to find that sweet spot where it's just soft, like just a little soft, and hold right below that, because that's the, that's the uh, breaking point of the herb. So we don't want to use the stems when we're cooking with thyme. Um, the stems, you could throw them into a stock or a broth, definitely, if you wanted to. <clears throat> but the stems are a little bit tough when it comes to thyme. So these are starting to soften a little. Now we have that nice, fresh thyme. We're going to add that in. Um, and then we're going to add a little bit of white wine to kind of deglaze the pan. I love adding wine at the base of a soup. I think it just adds like, adds a nice acidity, a little bit of sweetness. Um, you could also use sherry. Um, yeah, there's just something about a soup that has a base uh, that includes a little bit of wine that it just adds another dimension of flavor. So next time you're making your own, you know, favorite soup, think about what would it be like if you added 
just a splash of wine, um, sort of at the saute stage. So we're going to add that in. And you do want to kind of cook it until most of that liquid is evaporated and the uh, flavors will be absorbed by the veggies. Okay, we've got our garlic next. Pop that in. And then our wonderful mushrooms. So as this is cooking a little bit, and before I add our mushrooms, um, just to talk about how to work with mushrooms and how to store them. Um, so I'm going to be teaching a class uh, later this month or next on um, meals with mushrooms, plant-based meals with mushrooms, and we'll talk more about how to store them, how to clean them, and all that. But for the purposes of today, um, for the shiitake mushrooms, usually they are already pretty clean if you get them from the store. Um, you're going to trim off that stem. Some people eat the stem. Some people will chop up the stem, throw it in, especially if you're making a cream of mushroom soup, you can kind of blend everything. I find that they're just a little, a little fibrous in half. So I don't, I don't eat them, but you can save them and make your mushroom stock from that. Just pop them in some boiling water and let them boil for, you know, 20, 30 minutes to really infuse the water with the mushroom stems. And then you've got a mushroom broth that you could even use for the soup. So once you've got the stem off, I cut it in half. And then, well, you can cut straight across to make these kind of strips, or you can cut it in half and into quarters and to make smaller pieces that way. So however you want to, again, we are going to be, um, we're going to be blending it, so don't worry about it. And then for the baby bellows, now these ones do tend to be a bit dirty, but the good thing about them is they've got this tight little, um, you know, little cap like scooped up underneath. So first of all, again, I'm popping out the stems. You can choose to do whatever you like with them. Um, and then I will fill a bowl of water and just very, very quickly, after all the stems are popped off, plunge them in the water, shake for a second, just kind of agitate them and lift them right out. You don't want your, your mushrooms sitting in water for too long because they are like little sponges. So they're going to just absorb all of the water. You're gonna lose out on some of the flavor because they're just gonna get diluted. So you want to just very, very quickly, if you're going to do a quick water plunge, that's fine, but do it fast. All right, we're gonna start adding our mushrooms here. And just saute that. Any questions? Yes, there is a question from Valerie. She wants to know if you can use rehydrated mushrooms along with the fresh ones to mix things up. Yeah, so Val, that's a great suggestion. You can also make um, mushroom soup, cream of mushroom soup with dried mushrooms. Absolutely. You just want to rehydrate them for a while. Um, the thing about the dried mushrooms is that because they're rehydrated in water, they don't brown. Like right now, I'm hoping that, you know, there's enough space in the pan and these mushrooms can kind of brown a little bit and take on some of that wonderful flavor that the browning will impart. So that's sort of the catch with the dried mushrooms. It's, e you know, it's nice and easy because you can just keep dried mushrooms in your pantry and then use them at any time, but they, they won't get the same kind of browned effect that the fresh mushrooms will. So there's a little bit of a flavor compromise there. Thank you, that's it. Anyone else? Yeah. Not at this point. Okay. So I just want to show you, look how beautiful this is. This little mise en place. Look how much green there is. Like it's just, it's just bursting with spring. So, so exciting. So as this is cooking, I'm going to start working on our next recipe here. And I'm going to keep this going on a high heat back here so that the, um, everything can start to brown a little bit and get some nice flavor, as I mentioned. And um, so our next soup, and I'm just going to get this on the heat again, our next soup is going to be our spring minestrone. So minestrone uh, traditionally is just lots and lots of different vegetables. It's often served with pasta, but not necessarily. Um, so this is just a nice way to get in tons of veggies um, and feature some of the seasonal produce that's you know, at your farmer's market. So we're going to start by adding a little oil to the pot. And we're gonna slice up our garlic. Now for this one, I'm not crushing the garlic because I don't want as much of an aggressive garlic um, taste. So often you'll see me do this with a knife and kind of pop it and pull the skin off. 
For this one, I'm actually just going to slice the clove in half and I'll peel it like as if I were peeling a tiny onion. So I'll peel the skin off this way. And when you work with garlic in this fashion, um, garlic, garlic sort of responds to the force that's put upon it. So if you are aggressive with your garlic and you crush it and you mince it, um, it's going to respond with a really strong strong taste and uh, flavor. But if you're gentle with it and you just gently peel it and you gently slice it, it's going to respond with a little bit less of a garlic flavor. So it's really fascinating to me how the same food sliced and prepared in different ways can have different tastes um, and results. So very thin slices, as thin as you can get them with your knife. You can even use a mandolin for this if you're comfortable. It's hard to work with something so small. Of course, if you are, you know, if, if it's challenging for you to work with something in, of this size and maybe your dexterity is compromised, um, you can use a garlic press or something like that, or even just scoop, you know, your pre-minced garlic. You just want to get some kind of garlic flavor in there. Uh, you can also use ramps for this recipe. Wonderful, wonderful spring um, spring produce to use. Wild ramps. They're very flavorful. They taste uh, a lot like garlic, but they're just a little milder. It's beautiful, beautiful food to use. Um, and you can now find them at your farmer's market this time of year. It's very short season. People get very excited about ramps because it's just like very exciting, short, short season. Just checking on our mushrooms back here. They're going to keep going for a little bit. And then over here, I've got my pot heating up. I'm just going to add that oil. I'm actually going to turn it off because I don't want it too hot. So I don't want to... Um, I don't want to harm my, my garlic with a really aggressive high heat. So I'm just going to make sure to turn it down a little bit because it did get hot while I was prepping. I'll chop up the leeks in the meantime. So I just want to show you, I take off about there. I do leave a little bit of green on top. Most, most chefs will get rid of as much of the green as possible. But I find that, you know, just about there, you can still, you can still use all that good stuff. And then these, you know, again, you can, Throw them in your pot with your mushroom stocks, right? Make your own little leek mushroom broth. How delicious would that be? So you want to trim the roots. And then you're going to start by making a tunnel with your hand, slicing that leek straight down the middle, right? So now you've got a flat surface. So right, tunnel straight down the middle. This one's a little bit of like a question mark. <laughs> but, uh, but that is our goal here. And then we're just going to slice these up. Let's see, how am I going to puzzle these together? There we go. Slice these up in nice thin slices. Again, as thin as you can get them. And we're going to saute these with um, a few spices. We're going to use some ground coriander and some ground fennel as well. It just uh, gives a really nice fragrance to this soup. So once you've chopped them up, they're not quite ready to go in the pot, right? Because they are really super sandy. I have not washed them yet. And you can probably even see from the top, there's tons of dirt and sand in there. So what I'm gonna do is I have my big bowl of water, right? And then you're gonna, I wanna do this in a place where you can see me. Big bowl of water, put the leeks in and leeks will float. The dirt will sink to the bottom, but the leeks will float. So scrape up as much of that dirt, leeks, whatever's on that cutting board, it all goes in the bowl. And you just wanna kind of agitate it with your hands. So I'm kind of giving it like a little massage, breaking apart the leeks. And this way, all the dirt will fall to the bottom and your leeks will stay up to the top. So we're gonna start with the garlic, coriander, fennel, a little bit of oil. We're gonna add some lemon zest to this too. Um, so you can really add, you know, whatever kind of spring veggies you want. Um, today, I happen to have leeks. I happen to have sweet peas. I have some tarragon, so let's throw that in. All right, let's add, start with the garlic and the spices, just to get them a little activated and fragrant. So they're starting to sizzle. 
And then we're gonna add, this is our lemon zest. I'll show you how I got to that in our next recipe. Toss that in. I really love to add just a bit of uh, lemon zest for some brightness. And um, it's a great way to use up your, you know, use up the outside of the lemon, which we usually just throw out because we're just mostly interested in the juice, right? So we've got our lemon zest, our garlic, our coriander, a little salt, I don't think I added salt back here. A little salt there. Um, and then you don't need to add a ton of salt to this one because we're going to flavor it at the end with miso, which is salty. So you can see now I'm just kind of skimming the surface and drawing the leeks up. Give them a little shake and in they go. And they're gonna splatter and be super chatty and you know piss at you. But that is completely normal because the leaks are wet and your oil is hot. So just be mindful that you are, don't get too, you know, don't get too um, splattered by the oil. All right. So there's so much dirt at the bottom of this. I don't think you can see it, but it's really super sandy. So that does not go in the soup. <laughs> and then because I was working with those leaks and my cutting board may be sandy, I'm just going to give my knife a little rinse and just flip over the board. And work on the other side just in case there's you know a little bit of sand that got left behind. Chef, I'm a couple of questions here. Yeah. So what, Thank you. What, what do you think of peeled packaged garlic? Peeled packaged garlic. I think that that is a step up from um, from garlic that is peeled, packaged, and minced. <laughs> So I would say, you know, on the spectrum of, of garlic, uh, heads of garlic, you've got your beautiful uh, garlic from the farmer's market, then you've got your organic garlic from the grocery store, then you have your regular garlic from the grocery store, and then you have your peeled garlic from the grocery store, and then you have your chopped and minced and jarred garlic. So that's sort of where I would put it on the garlic spectrum. There you go. So what is leek's flavor? Is it like scallions, onions, shallots? Where does it fall and how strong is its flavor? Oh my gosh. If you've never had a leek before, you're in for a treat. It's sort of like, um, I would describe it as like a more gentler onion. So like maybe a little bit gentler even than a shallot. Um, yeah, it's just, it has like this little creaminess that comes with leeks. Um, so it, it includes the texture and then, you know, it just has this wonderful flavor. I don't know if anybody in the audience wants to type in, what's your experience of leeks? How do you enjoy them or, or do you not enjoy them even? Um, yeah. All right, so we've got our leeks in there. Any other questions? Yes, what's the advantage of washing the leeks after you cut them? Right, so it's just a lot easier because those leeks are so, they're layered, right? So the sand and the dirt can really get into all of those layers and the leeks as it's growing up. So when you slice it up first, you just make sure that all the way from the top to the bottom, every single layer is exposed to water and it's washed really well. And then the last question here is, what's a good substitute for beans if, you know, for someone who can't eat beans? Um, sure, I'll, I'll speak to both recipes. So for the shiitake mushrooms and the creamy mushroom soup, we're using the beans to kind of build a little bit of body and creaminess into this soup. Um, you could probably use like maybe a handful of oats for that rest for the, the mushroom soup recipe, like maybe a third of a cup or half a cup, you know, a third of a cup to half a cup of rolled oats and blend that in with the broth that's going to help to give it a lot of creamy creaminess and texture as well. Um, and then for this recipe with the beans added in whole, as I'm about to here, you can just leave them out. You don't need to have, you know, kind of leany beans in here if you don't like them or don't want them. Anything else? So Mar Marlene responded to your question about how people have used leeks. So she says leek and potato soup in the U.S. Oh. I think I'm saying that properly, but she says that's not how they say it in France, or that's not. Vichoisie. Yeah, I think it's vichoisie or vichoisie. I always get it confused. I, I know what you're talking about, though, Marlene. Okay, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. 
And then Wonderful. Now, that, that leeks taste like mild onions with a touch of green. Yeah, that's a nice description, Val. It, it's just like a little bit of like a greenish flavor. If green had a flavor, I guess, yes. right? Awesome. All right, so we got our cannellini beans in there. Let's add our snap peas, our spring snap peas. Um, and for the snap peas, I bought them um, stringless, so that was super easy. You don't have to, they don't have to, you know, manage those strings, but you can also just chop them up about that big and stir this all together. We're going to um, toss in our chives as well. You can use scallions if you prefer, but I had some beautiful fresh chives from the garden, so we'll add that to the pot. Uh, so really, whatever, you know, lovely, beautiful spring produce you're really excited about, you can just add it to, to this recipe. Asparagus is in season and would have been a lovely addition. Um, fennel, I could not get fennel, so we're not adding it. Um, maybe you have a couple of zucchinis in your fridge, you know, to, to play around with. So you could add that in. You can really customize this based on what veggies you have. Um, but seasonality is the key. You really want to try to use ingredients that, you know, are seasonal. They work together so beautifully because they grow together so beautifully. So here we go with our tarragon. And this recipe does not call for tarragon, but because I had it in the garden and I didn't have fennel, I just thought, well, why not? Right? So you guys are kind of getting a sense of the theme here with um with this particular recipe seasonal beautiful seasonal produce all going right in all right so you just want to make sure that the leaves have softened a little bit and the um peas and everything have a nice bright green color we're going to use water for this so i'm using cold water because i don't want this to be a cloudy soup i kind of like how clear and um, how when you add hot water or hot, st hot stock to a soup, it does make it kind of cloudy, um, which is, you know, fine if you don't mind. But for this minestrone, I wanted something that was like a nice clear soup. So you could really see all the beautiful vegetables that we added in there. I didn't want them to get lost in kind of a murky, murky soup. All right. And then finally we're going to add some peas to this so i have some peas here we're going to add in some fresh arugula you could also use spinach spinach is wonderful here's our miso that's going to get added at the end and then i like to garnish this with just a few radishes sliced thinly on top they look so beautiful and they add a little bit of a crunch crunchy texture as well so i'm trimming the tops and the bottoms and I'm just going to cut each one in half. So I, again, have a flat surface. And you can cut this into little half moons. You could make this into matchsticks if you wanted a different, you know, kind of a funky shape or something like that. Um, you know, you can play around with different colors and textures and shapes with your food. And, um, you know, in my, in my training um, in culinary school, that's something that we really emphasized was to make sure that we include a variety of textures as well as flavors, as well as visual components. Um, because when we do that, we are more satisfied with our food and our eating, right? When you see something, you think, wow, you know, look how beautiful that radish will be on top of the soup right when you see something um, or smell something or experience something on your plate it just adds a more profound um, layer of experiencing your food um, into into your meal so just um, my own little food philosophy derived from from culinary school all right so getting back to our mushroom soup while everything's gently simmers over here. Actually, you know what? Before I go to the mushroom soup, I'd like to go to our third soup because I do want to start cooking that down. So the third one, and I know there's a lot going on at once. I will make sure that I lay everything out step by step. Our third one is a sweet soup. So something to 
uh, enjoy and savor um, the first fruits of the season. So we have rhubarb here, and you can find it at the farmer's market, or as I found out, you can find it <laughs> frozen in the grocery store. Of course, you know what I'm going to say. The one that is, you know, local from this market is probably a lot better than this one. But this is what we found today. And then same thing here. We've got our strawberries. So just trimming the top and then slicing those into smaller pieces. And you just want to cook this down until it makes sort of a nice fruit uh, mixture. So I'm going to add our rhubarb to a pot back here. When, and this rhubarb has been thawed, so it's no longer frozen, frozen, frozen. We're going to add our strawberries. Um, and then we're going to add some water. And just cover that all up. So it really has time to, to um, boil together. We also have a little bit of vanilla extract. Um, and I think, you, I think I wrote that you could add lemon zest to this as well. I can't remember. I think I did, though. So adding a little bit of vanilla extract and if you'd like your lemon zest as well. So we can just use our little zester here and grate the outside. Don't go too deep um, on your grating because you don't want a lot of the white stuff a little bitter, the pith. So you just want to kind of work around the lemon. Questions? So yes, um, if you use zucchini, do you need to peel it? No, you can use, yeah, you can use zucchini without peeling it. Just wash it first. Um, the zucchini feels really yummy. I love zucchini. Um, I think if you maybe have a zucchini with like really big seeds, like sometimes in the garden, we pick our zucchinis a little too late, <laughs> but they're not so late that they, you know, turn to, to wood. Mm -hmm. um, so you can still use them. At, in a case like that, I would just scrape out the seeds. But Mostly you can use uh, zucchini with the skin and the seeds all together. And there's a question about the rhubarb. So it says five stalks. How many cups is that? So um, it's about a pound, I think, of rhubarb. Let me see. One pound fresh strawberry, five stalks rhubarb. Yeah, so five stalks rhubarb is maybe like three quarters of a pound. Um, in terms of cups, once you sliced it all up, just trying to picture it in my mind. It's hard to see it. <laughs> I would say somewhere between like five to six cups. Yeah. Each, each stalk being, you know, maybe a little shy of a cup. Good question. Okay, so let's get back to our soups over here. And I have honey for this um, strawberry rhubarb soup. That's going to be for the end because I don't want the honey to get too hot. So I'm just going to let those cook together, cook down, and then we'll blend it, add the honey, and just blend it again and serve it. Serve it warm or cold. All right, so we have our mushroom stock over here. We have our mushroom mixture. And I just want to show you... Like you can see they've gotten soft and you can even see the bottom of the pan. There's some slight brown spots. That's fantastic. because That's all really good flavor that I want in this soup. So I'm just gonna make sure I have a good dry towel to grip this up high and then you can add it to your broth and blend it. So the broth is not warm and um, you can you know heat it up before serving, or you can just store it like this, and then, you know, whenever you have it in your refrigerator, ready to go. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was about the pan that I'm using. I'm using a Rondo, which has these nice high edges, but it also has tons of room and space for the mushrooms to gather a little bit of browning. Because when you add those leeks in there with the onion and the garlic and everything else, and the mushrooms, right? You have a nice big surface here so that it can brown um, it can brown a little bit. And again, that's adding flavor to the soup. So if you don't have a giant Rondeau pan that is the size of my first apartment, <laughs> um, you could instead you do it in a few batches. So find your biggest pan with the widest base and maybe do it in one or two batches just so you get the flavor from the browning in there. All right, so we're ready to blend here. 
And let me get some bowls so you can have a look at the soup. It really does gather a ton of body from the beans. Really, it smells really, really good. Okay, so before I finish that off, just jumping back over to our soup over here. Everything's simmered, everything's tender. I'm gonna add our bright beans, some arugula, and you just wanna cook that until it wilts, right? Don't wanna cook that for too long. And this is done, simple spring minestrone. If you wanted to make this a little more hearty or a little more filling, you know, you could add some, um, some grains to it. You could add, um, you could add quinoa would be really good, cooked quinoa. You could cook up some barley or some farro um, and have those cooked up and then add them in and cook that all together. So you have some nice options here. We'll put our radishes. And then let's not forget we're adding our miso to this. So the miso is really important to this soup. It just adds that umami layer where otherwise you're just kind of hitting one note with those vegetables. And remember, we're not even using vegetable stock for this one. It's just water. So the miso does add that, that umami, that body, that richness, you know, that we're going to be, that otherwise we're going to be missing. So you just want to make sure that all keep stirring it, keep working it down. Because the miso takes a while to break down in the heat. Questions about that one? Or the mushroom one, for that matter. No, no questions at this time. Okay. So this is what I mean when I say mushroom soups are not the most beautiful of soups, right? It's kind of just this blah, beige, you know, thing. But it is so flavorful. And if you want, you know, get a few little arugula leaves. And you can even, you know, one of the tricks we use for, like, food photography and stuff, you can take your... Um, arugula leaves and toss them in a little bit of oil just to make them like really shiny, you know, and then you can put them on top and just add that, right? So you just took your dish from a blah beige mushroom soup to something that's really appealing and elegant and, you know, has a little even more nutrition from the arugula. So we've got our mushroom soup ready. I'm going to dish out our next soup our spring minestrone. And again, I'm gonna do this in a white plate so you can really see. This one is much more colorful, really much more colorful. So you've got tons and tons of spring produce and veggies in there. And again, use, use your zucchini, use your ramps, use your asparagus, right? How pretty is that? Right, so instead of just having you know, a regular old salad over and over again, which don't get me wrong, I love my salads, but in the spring, I just feel like I tend to overdo it a little bit with the fresh produce that's all around. Sometimes I just want a different flavor, a different texture and a different experience of these spring foods. So soups is a nice way to do that. All right, let's check on our um, strawberries and rhubarb back here. They're starting to cook down nicely can really smell the vanilla. And I'm gonna be using the blender again for this one. So I'm just going to transfer that mushroom mixture so that we can blend up the strawberry and um, rhubarb together without mushrooms, because who wants that combination? <laughs> so a fun thing uh, about rhubarb that I learned, it has a really sour taste. Um, it requires cold winters to grow. So that's why rhubarbs are, are often found in specific regions. It's a very regional food. Um, and only the stalks are eaten. Please do not go near the rhubarb leaves. I know they're beautiful and green and you think, oh, they look so appealing, but they are poisonous. So you do not want to eat the rhubarb leaves um, and you just want to enjoy the stalks. Um, and then they're very low calorie. They're very high in fiber. 
Um, they contain antioxidants, uh, specifically one that's called antho, anthocyanin. I think that's how you pronounce it. And that anthocyanin is responsible for that red color that you see on the rhubarb. Um, it is high in oxalates. So if you have kidney issues or any concerns about high oxalate foods, then you would not enjoy rhubarb. <laughs> you just would have, you know, maybe just have this with strawberries instead. Um, all right. And then in terms of our strawberries, we know we love strawberries. They're mostly made of water, very high in fiber. Um, they do contain fructose, the naturally occurring sugar found in fruit. They're a great source of vitamin C, even more than oranges, which not a lot of people realize. Um, and they contain potassium. They're very high in potassium as well, which is very useful for regulating blood pressure and antioxidants. Uh, so strawberries are particularly good for heart health. So it's a good excuse to enjoy your strawberries. They're also just so yummy. Um, all right, I think that was all of the foods we are enjoying. Oh, I wanted to just touch upon the cannellini beans. I know that there's a guest out there that doesn't enjoy the beans, but for those of us that are enjoying them, um, they contain lots of protein. And what I find particularly fascinating about beans is they serve as prebiotic material. So we often hear about the um, probiotics and probiotics are the uh, beneficial but gut bacteria basically that help us to thrive and survive. Um, and the beans are food for those probiotics, for those microbes, for those microorganisms. Um, what's particularly interesting about beans is when the, when the, when the, post, when the, sorry, let me see if I can explain this correctly. When the prebiotics, the fibers, the beans feed the probiotics, the microbes, they produce postbiotics. Now this one was new to me. So postbiotics are what happens after the microbes eat the prebiotics. So you've got your prebiotics coming in, feeding the microbes, the probiotics, and then you have postbiotics, which is what happens after the microbes have eaten. So the fermentation of these fibers results in the formation of short chain fatty acids, such as acetate. So I kind of think of it as like, if you're if your probiotics eat the prebiotics and they're kind of like, oh, that was a good meal, or maybe they let out a little belch, you know, uh, that is your acetate, which can make, which can possibly improve um, colon health and reduce your risk of colon cancer. So kind of amazing, this whole process that happens in our guts just from eating beans. All right. So enough, enough about that. I get to, I like to nerd out about food and nutrition stuff. And that was just a really fun one that I learned. So our um, rhubarbs are cooked down, our strawberries are softened. We can add this to the blender. Hopefully not splattering too much as I did. <laughs> and blend it up. And then let's not forget, we're gonna add our honey as well. Um, for the honey, I called for a third of a cup in your recipes, but of course, if you are just going off of sugars or anything like that, you can, Leave the honey out. We don't need the honey in this strawberry so we eat on their own. Beautiful. And at this point, you could taste and adjust and see. It smells really good. Smell vanilla. I smell lemon. We'll add the honey in now. And that'll be it. So it's 115. Do we have any final questions or comments about our simple spring? Soups. Well, so I've given you. Yes, go ahead. Two quick comments. So Chris um, stated that conversely, something that looks appealing might disappoint in your reference to your um, mushroom soup not looking very appealing. And <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> very generous of you. Yes, thank. Um, e said, thanks for the easy, the easy to understand explanation of the pre probiotics and how it relates to digestive health. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. I just find it so fascinating. All right, so let's add our, um, put out our beautiful, you can see this color. Now this color is like, wow, this beautiful pink color. And this is your dessert soup, right? So you've got this lovely, and you can serve this hot or cold. It's really nice um, served cold, maybe with a little dollop of Greek yogurt in there. 
or something like that. So it's a really, really nice, refreshing summer spring soup to enjoy. And then you have all these other veggies to add into. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I'm so grateful to all of you for your participation, your questions. Um, Alita, thank you as always for being a fabulous moderator. And I hope to see you all again soon. Please continue to share our programs with your friends and family. It really means so much to me and to the hospital that we can be in your homes, in your lives, cooking with you, uh, sharing nutrition and, and fun recipes. And I hope that you all have a wonderful spring and enjoy some fantastic spring soups. Bye, everyone.